John chapter 3, we're going to read the first seven verses. Say amen if you're there. Amen. There was a man of the Pharisees named Nicodemus, a ruler of the Jews. The same came to Jesus by night and said unto him, Rabbi, we know that thou art a teacher come from God, for no man can do these miracles that thou doest except God be with him. Jesus answered and said unto him, Verily, verily, I say unto thee, except a man, or you could put person here, be born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. Nicodemus saith unto him, How can a man be born when he is old? Can he enter the second time into his mother's womb and be born? And Jesus answered, Verily, verily, I say unto thee, except a man be born of water and of the Spirit, he cannot enter into the kingdom of God. I don't know about you, but I want to get into things of God. And I want the things of God to get into me. Well, we got any born again apostolic folks in the house? That, that, that which is born of flesh is flesh. Don't confuse this. And that which is born of the spirit is spirit. Marvel not that I said unto thee, ye must be born again. Let's place our Bibles down. Let's take a moment. Let's give honor to the King of Kings and the Lord, Lord Jesus. We love you. We need you. Lord, I pray, God, that your spirit will just completely encase this entire building and every person in it. Let an impartation of faith, uh, unction, and revelation go forth, God, into the hearts and the minds of all that hear, even those Online, God, help us, God, to be saved from this untoward generation, to flee the wrath to come, and everybody say in Jesus' name. In Jesus name. Amen. Amen. God bless you. You can be seated. I admit that not realizing the depth, the length of the search that I would have for God, that I would darken the door of what we term as a charismatic church. And they called me forward. And the friend that invited me gave me a good stiff one to the ribs to push me to the front of the church that I would repeat the sinner's prayer and accept Jesus Christ as my personal Savior. And we even live in a time today where, for those of you that tune in and pay attention, uh, we have... Uh, gigantic conglomerate churches that will lead you to prayer over the TV or whatever medium you choose to use, your phone, your computer, and they'll close their service out by having you accept Jesus Christ as your personal Savior, and they'll say, if you prayed that prayer, we believe you're born again. I don't want to hurt nobody's feelings, especially God's. So I'm just going to stick in the word tonight, if that's okay with you, because I don't agree with that. In fact, I say no, because I'll be honest with you. If you just put down that cigarette and we believe you kicked the habit, or if you just put down that bottle and now you're no longer an alcoholic, or if you just put down those drugs that you're no longer a drug addict, I'll say, well, you know, there's a little more to that because you can't pick them up tomorrow. There's got to be transition and transformation. There's got to be dominion. I want dominion over things that could keep me out of heaven. Are you hearing what I'm saying? I want, I want it to really happen for me and you and all those that will. And I'm thankful that Nicodemus decided that even by night, whether he was sneaking around because he was worried what everybody said or he was sneaking around because he really wanted to know, hey, I've read some things in Scripture, Jesus. I really want to know what's going on. And you have to understand, Nicodemus at that time probably had a good grasp on what he felt what it is to be right with God. But I'm thankful that God gives second chances. I got a couple of thirds and fourths in here too. Can I get an amen? I'm thankful for the second birth, the spiritual birth. Yes, yeah. You know, I'll say this. You have to understand something. 
I'm thankful that God will forgive people you won't. That might be me. I, I, I'm thankful. There, there's been some times I've been upset. And maybe I went and didn't want to extend grace or mercy. But, but I'm thankful God's God and you and I aren't. I, I'm, I'm thankful that I can be in Christ. In fact, Paul goes on and he says in 2 Corinthians, Therefore, if any man or any person be in Christ, he is a new creature. All things are passed away. Behold, all things are become new. And all things are of God who hath reconciled us to himself by Jesus Christ and hath given to us the ministry of reconciliation. Look around the room. You have the ministry of reconciliation. You and I ought to be here saying, I'm going to extend mercy to one another because we're going to reconcile people to God. Welcome to Heaven's Hospital. Mm -hmm. To wit or to know that God was in Christ reconciling the world unto himself, not imputing their trespasses unto them, and hath committed unto us the word of reconciliation. Now then we are, and he uses an interesting word here, ambassadors. Are there any ambassadors in the house today? Are there any ambassadors? Are there any soul winners in the house? Can anybody come into your life when you're hey, I want in. Tell me how to get in. Yeah. For Christ, as though God did beseech you by us, we pray you in Christ's stead be reconciled to God. No matter what your life has been like up until this point, you can be born again and get a clean slate. Colossians tells us, beware lest any man. You need, you need to understand, I'm thankful that when I was taught this truth, that I can realize that I was wrong. I don't want to do something so long and not turn it just because I got too much pride for me that I want to admit. I'm glad I got a second opportunity. I don't want the world and its philosophy and ideology to, well, Except Jesus Christ is your personal Savior, you can continue to sin because I don't want that philosophy, that vain deceit after the tradition of men and after the rudiments of the world and not after Christ. Anybody here chasing Jesus? Anybody in here? Am I by myself? I, 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 I get up every day, I want to get closer. Now, you have to understand, I'm not going to find that utopia where I get along with everybody. Because I'm still going to wake up with my old nature, and I have to subdue it. Now, this is a great time of year to, to really check your nature. You can, and it takes twice as long to get across this town right now. Everybody and their brother must have come to visit their families down here. It can't be a football game every day. <laughs> Man, going to Walmart, you'll find out if you got the Holy Ghost. You, I know my wife is smarter than me. She sent me to Walmart today. I just looked at her. You know I'm preaching tonight. Yeah. Go on. <laughs> so like a good husband, I braved the elements, the carnality, the downright sin and audaciousness of the season. And I came through like a champ and rescued that steamer and brought it home to my beautiful wife. Are you hearing me? Back in our notes tonight. After the rudiments of the world and not after Christ. For in him dwelleth all the fullness of the Godhead bodily. I'm thankful that God was manifest in the flesh. Amen. It says, and I take this personal, take heed therefore unto yourselves and to all the flock over which the Holy Ghost hath made you overseers to feed the church of God, which he hath purchased with his, with his own blood. If God's a spirit, when did God have blood? Mm. 
if you were born once, you'll die twice. But if you're born twice, you'll only die once. You know, it could be it could be said it's better off to never have been born than to not be born again. You must be born again because only your second birth can cancel your second funeral. You, you think your first funeral's sad? It only lasts about an hour. That second funeral lasts an eternity. Are you hearing what I'm saying? So the two dimensions or aspects to being born again. Water baptism puts you in Christ. Holy Ghost baptism puts Christ in you. Are you with me tonight? Colossians 1, 27, to whom God would make known what is the riches of the glory of this mystery among the Gentiles, which is Christ in you, the hope of glory. You must be born again of water and the spirit. I'm telling you, I'm thankful that I've been born again. Hallelujah. Well, let, me, let me talk about that water for a minute. Baptism is not an option. There is no such, such thing in the Bible as a Christian who's not baptized. Mark 16 tells us, He that believeth and is baptized shall be saved, but he that believeth not shall be damned. Jesus himself stated the fact when he talked to Nicodemus, when he said, Verily, verily, I say unto thee, except the man be born of water and of the Spirit, he cannot enter the kingdom of God. If you're not willing to be baptized the biblical way, you can't get into God's kingdom. The Bible says that there's only one baptism. Mm -hmm. So if there's only one right way, then there's only one way. Ephesians tells us again, one Lord, one faith, and one baptism. Don't let the incarnation of Christ fool you. God robed himself in flesh and dwelt among us. Are you hearing what I'm saying? So if there's only one baptism, what is it? Why do we have all this stuff? Thank you. You can say that louder. Hallelujah. We must be immersed in water. That is the mode because Jesus was baptized by immersion. Because every baptism in the Bible was by immersion. Because that's precisely what the word baptism means. <laughs> Because it is the portrayal of the burial and resurrection. It is the typology, if you aren't familiar. We must be baptized in Jesus' name. That is the formula that we baptize people. Every baptism recorded in the book of Acts was performed in Jesus' name. In the day of Pentecost, in Acts chapter 2, verse 38. Be baptized, every one of you, in the name of Jesus Christ for the remission of of sins. How many were here Wednesday night for the remission? Yeah. Amen. I, I like church. I like the programs. I'm glad we got to play. I'm glad we're going to have dinners and whatever. But we're still here to defeat sin. To make heaven. We're still here to get sin vanquished by the blood of Jesus. We'll have our programs and we'll have our parties. And we'll have our fellowship, but we're still here to get people to heaven. The Samaritans in Acts 6, 8 and 16 were baptized in the name of the Lord Jesus. The house of Cornelius in Acts chapter 10, he commanded them to be baptized in the name of the Lord. The disciples of John in Acts 19 were baptized in the name of the Lord Jesus. Paul's baptism in Acts 22 and 16. And now why tarriest thou arise and be baptized? Wash away thy sins, calling on the name of the Lord. The epistles teach. It's an old joke, but I can't ever get by it. The epistles are not the apostles' wives. It's the letters, guys. You see all those little things after uh, Acts? Those are letters. They're called epistles. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Galatians 3 and 27, for as many as you have been baptized into Christ, have put on Christ. Romans 6 and 3, know ye not that so many of us were baptized into Jesus Christ, were baptized into his death. Colossians 1 and 12, buried with him in baptism, were also 
ye are risen with him through the faith of the operation of God who hath raised him from the dead. Romans 6 and 5, for if we have been planted together in the likeness of his death, we shall also be in the likeness of his resurrection. Yeah. Hallelujah. I like that part. Hallelujah. That's hope. Ah, that's what a church is for. That's what we're here for. Jesus is the only name with power to save. Philippians chapter 2, 9 through 11, wherefore God also hath highly exalted him and given him a name which is above every name, that at the name of Jesus uh, every knee should bow of things in heaven and things in earth. Well, that pretty much covers everything. And things under the earth, and that every tongue should confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to glory of God the Father. Acts 4 and 12. Neither is there salvation in any other, for there is none other name under heaven given on man, whereby we must be saved. So we now get to the Spirit. Acts chapter 17 and verse 28 says, For in him we live and move and have our being, as certain also of your own poets have said, for we all are also his offspring. Zechariah in the Old Testament said, This is the word of the Lord unto Zerubbabel, saying, Not by might nor by power, but by my spirit, saith the Lord. God is a spirit, and they that worship him must worship him in spirit and in truth. It's okay to shout and get excited and, and get the Holy Ghost and speak in tongues and get spiritual. Hey, my God. I, I heard it said one time, man, they're so, they're so spiritually minded. They're no earthly good. I, hate, I ain't met anybody like that yet. I, I've seen a whole lot of people so worldly minded, I don't even know if they got the spirit. Yeah. If you want to be in the body of Christ, you must receive his spirit. Yes. Corinthians tells us in 12, 13, for by one spirit, we're all baptized into one body. Whether we be Jews or Gentiles, I like there ain't no racism in the church. And I, I, I hate to break it to the White House and the outhouse. But the church can fix this problem. Yeah. Whether we bond or free and have all been made to drink into one spirit. Romans 8, 14 says, For as many are as are led by the Spirit of God, they are the sons of God. Oh, hallelujah. For we have not received the spirit of bondage again to fear. Here is greater bondage than any prison. But you have received the spirit of adoption. Yes. Thank you, Lord. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Whereby we cry, Abba, Father, the Spirit itself bear witness with our spirit that we are the children of God. How many know when you're messing up? The Holy Ghost will lead and guide you into all truth, the Bible says. Oh, I know what I'm about. Let's be honest with you. You know when you're messing up. <laughs> I know. I'll just be fair. Come on, we know when we're messing up. We have that little interior monologue. <laughs> Jesus, I'm pretty good. <laughs> Sister Carly, you're telling on yourself. <laughs> I love the honesty. I tell you, there's something. Hey, I wish I was sweet all the time. I'm not. I've had the Holy Ghost for 35 years. You know what? I still need it. If it wasn't for the Holy Ghost, I wouldn't have made that trip to get that steamer today. I wouldn't have made it. I don't know what it is. People, they think that, oh, man, that little in, in nondescript little Toyota truck will just, just cut them off. Who cares? You don't need that part in the spot. Take it in front of him. Yeah. Walking around trying to say, Jesus, love me this I know. <laughs> oh, Bible, help me stay calm. <laughs> yeah. The Bible says, well, how do you know you receive the Holy Ghost? The Bible says that when you do, you'll speak in another tongue as the Spirit gives the utterance. In fact, Isaiah chapter 28 says, prophesy that with stammering lips and another tongue. I wonder if Nicodemus saw that. I wonder if Nicodemus remembered that. So you know what? He probably couldn't go to all the other Pharisees, Brother Joey. 
and they're, they're, they're banging on them over there. Hey, it ain't always the bad thing to separate yourself from the crowd. Now, I'm taking a little bit of this. I just didn't say this, but something compelled Nicodemus to go by himself at night. In other words, he didn't have to get somebody or some friend. The world can go to hell in a handbasket. It doesn't mean you have to go. The whole world can get mandated and forced into doing something they don't want to do. You can say, ah. Now, I hate to break it to you. I was the bad guy back there in, in grade school. I remember we was late for school, and there was in the ditch, and it was, it was springtime, and these grasshoppers were going crazy everywhere. And I, there was about five of us. And I said, come on, let's catch grasshoppers. Lone tree school in BL Air Force Base. I was knee high to a grasshopper myself at the time. And I kind of coerced four of them to stay. And little freckled faced Eddie said, nah, uh uh. <laughs> no, I'm going to school. I'm going. And he turned off and walked. I said something stupid to him. And four of us got back down there and the catching grasshoppers. It wasn't but moments later, all of a sudden, I heard the screech of tires. I looked up. Why did my dad have to pull up? Yeah. The little freckle face, Eddie had it right. I'm not going to be right to do wrong. I won't be right. I don't want to be at odds with my father. You don't have to. You don't have to follow the crowd, and you don't have to follow the vein, the seat, and the traditions of men and what they're doing. You can get in this word, and you can find out what it says, and you can turn your back on the world and turn back your back on secular Christianity that's trying to dilute, and diminish the power of God. I'm thankful they can throw themselves in all sorts of things, get accolades, and make millions turn around and thumb their nose at the church and call us ridiculous, but one day we're going to be the smartest ones leaving, leaving the planet. Joel chapter 2, it says, I will pour out of my spirit upon all flesh. I'm telling you, this is still that. This is that. This is the whole point. Joel, thank you, buddy. But we get to experience because this is that. I want to make sure that this is still that to me. You can get caught up in other things and you can worry about the Joneses and everybody else. But I want to walk with Jesus. It was those Jewish disciples on the day of Pentecost that got to enjoy that this is that. And in Acts 19, the disciples of John the Baptist, Acts 10 and 46, it says, for they heard them speak with tongues and magnify God. Then Peter jumped in. Oh, man, they need to baptize these guys. Yeah. Acts 10, he, Peter said, for they heard them speak with tongues and magnify God. You see, baptism and the Holy Ghost are undeniably biblical and true. I remember someone telling me, I got the Holy Ghost, but how do you know? I just know. That's not what the Bible says. He said, for they heard them speak with other tongues. It's like you must be obedient be baptized in Jesus' name. We have to yield ourselves. See, I yielded myself today to the Holy Ghost. And sometimes you're not always going to feel that overwhelmed. And it's, sometimes it's a beautiful presence. And sometimes... It's basically him that knoweth to do good, better do good. Does that make sense? Can we say it that way? Do we, do we really have to over-spiritualize and say, wait a minute. You know better. Anybody just know better? No, you got that little thing. You keep it to yourself. I don't want to know. If you know better, then do better. It's, isn't that God? Didn't even look at Cain and say, hey. If thou doest well, shalt thou not be accepted? If thou doest not well, sin lieth at the door. I have a choice. We have a choice. I'm thank, I thank God for the Holy Ghost. 
I need to yield myself to it, to the word and what it says. Don't let someone try to tell you what the, uh, something that the word doesn't say. What does it say? You need to know it. Study to show thyself approved. A workman. Come on. The Holy Spirit is given to believers. And after that, ye heard the word of truth, the gospel of your salvation, in whom also after that ye believed. And these signs shall follow them that believe. I don't have to be confused. You don't have to be confused. It doesn't, I don't care if they have a great big giant building down the road and a carnival every other week and they've got programs and, and you get a cookie and you get a mug that you could drink coffee and they give you a bumper sticker. I, that ain't none of that going to get me in heaven. I better get the Holy Ghost in the name of Jesus. And I apologize if, if we don't have a coffee kiosk out there. But you can get for the Holy Ghost in here. Maybe the next building will budget a little coffee kiosk and make sure some poor saints running for donuts. I, I don't got nothing against that. It's just not more important than this. I must be saved. I, I must be full of the Holy Ghost. I, I got to make sure I got his name on my life, on my wife's life, on my children's life, on my family, on my church, on my friends, on my neighbor, whosoever. That's why we have the church. That's why we're order to repent and be baptized. Can I use that word and not offend you? Be baptized every one of you in the name of Jesus Christ for the remission of sins and you shall receive the Holy Ghost. Mark 16 and 17 says, they shall speak with new tongues. But this he spake of the Spirit. Don't confuse that there. Which they that believe on him should receive. In Acts 19, have you received the Holy Ghost since you believe? What a wonderful story that is. There are so many wonderful people. They're wonderful. They're great. I'm so thankful to meet so many people that are developing a relationship with, with God and, 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 and they're, 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 they, they've, you know, they've, they've got all sorts of little trinkets and, and they got a Bible and they, they, they're good people and they're seeking God but there still needs to be an obedience factor. Yes. Don't believe me? Hey, you can have a marriage but if there's no obedience to the relationship if there's no commitment to the what kind of marriage is it? Oh, it's an open marriage. Amen. Next 19, it says, and it came to pass that while Apollos was at Corinth, Corinth was a rough place. Paul, having passed through the upper coast, came to Ephesus. You guys need to go ahead and get ready. And finding certain disciples, he said to them, listen, you're going to listen to somebody. We all do. You, you, you've got the, you've got the, You've got to find something to base how you're going to conduct yourself on. Paul's not a bad one. And he meets some wonderful people and he asks them, have you received the Holy Ghost since you believe? Let me ask you, I wonder what kind of world we'd really be living in if that really had remained the question that Christians ask Christians. I know we, I know we kind of made it a little rough. You've been around a little while. When's the last time you prayed through? <laughs> yeah, I, I, yeah, you, you, yeah, you know. That's just another way of saying it. When's the last time you prayed through? <laughs> When's the last time you let God speak to yield yourself? Mm -hmm. We got to yield ourselves to the Holy Ghost. But these guys respond. They said unto him, "We have not so much 
has heard whether there be any Holy Ghost. Do you, do you want to be the person that didn't tell? Some of us are so good at telling our trials, telling our troubles, gossiping. Look, I get it. We live in a world that has, you know, a degree in that. It's, it's got it in spades. But isn't it time for the church to step up and say, you know what? If a 12-year-old Jesus can say, I must be about my father's business, I, I want to be about my, have, I can be about my father's business. You know what? I, I'm going to love people enough to say, hey, I, 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 man, that's awesome. I'm glad you love God. I'm glad you're real. Hey, have you received the Holy Ghost? Have you been baptized in Jesus' name? Because let me tell you, I can tell you what it did for me. It turned, hell, oh man, it straightened me out. It got me out of a mess. It's still keeping me out of a mess. It's still helping me. It's real, it's real. I know it's real. And they answered him. They, it's a great conversation. He said unto them, unto them, what were you baptized? He said, unto John's baptism. And said, Paul, he didn't cut him down. He said, well, you meatball, come here, let me help. No. So John barely baptized with the baptism of repentance. Repentance is a wonderful thing. Acts 2.38, the very first thing we're told to do is repent. Jesus, I'm sorry. I want to do right according to your way. I've got a lot of things I've said in my life, a lot of things I've done with my life, a lot of things that don't line up with your word. And if I want to walk with you, the Bible tells us how can two walk together except they be agreed. I don't know about you, but I, I think it'd be good to agree with Jesus. I think it'd be good to be right with God. I'm thankful for the opportunity that I can turn and, and, and start doing right. Amen. Repentance is wonderful. It's a gift. It's not something to run from. It's not something to be afraid of. I'm thankful that I can still come come in here and come to an altar and just repent. I'm going to give you something free. I was talking to someone the other day. Repentance is dif different than forgiveness. I walk down there and slap Brother Lawrence. They forgive me. He has to forgive me according to the word of God. Yeah. 70 times 7, brother. I don't know if you survived that. <laughs> but repentance says, mean I'm not doing it again. Some of us need to advance. I'm turning my life around. I'm turning around. I want to walk with Jesus. I want to be agreed. I, I don't want to do that again. Are you hearing me? John ver verily baptized with the baptism of repentance, saying the people that should believe on him, which should come after him, that is on Christ Jesus. When they heard this, they argued and fought, kicked each other and put, no, they don't say that. It says they were baptized in the name of the Lord Jesus. That's why when we baptize someone around here, we baptize them in Jesus' name. Jesus. Neither is there salvation in any other, for there's none other name given to men whereby we must be saved. Oh, I, I know you've heard it all before. Well, boy, it feels good to hear it again. I thank God for the truth. I thank God all the songs and all the music and all the stuff. Church should still be about Jesus getting people saved, getting them to heaven, heaven and living a good godly life. Loving one another and helping one another along the way. When they heard this, they were baptized in the name of the Lord Jesus. When Paul laid his hands upon them, the Holy Ghost came on them and they spake with her. Amen. According to scripture, 12 believers. 12. Wow. Because he was just willing to say, hey, you received the Holy Ghost? You can get the Holy Ghost. Not, not someone telling you, you'll know. 
Because that, hey, that's not you. That man, I didn't man, that I don't know what the spirit gives the utterance. And you yield your why the tongue? The tongue is the most unruly member. Oh yeah, I'm not that's another Bible so I'm not gonna go down that. I want to bring this to a close. Matthew 3 and 11 says, I indeed baptize you with the water under repentance. I'm just letting you know what John was saying. But he that cometh after me is mightier than I, whose shoes I'm not worthy to bear. He shall baptize you with the Holy Ghost and with fire. Praise God. When Jesus was speaking in Matthew 16, he said, I say also unto thee that thou art Peter. Let's stand. And upon this rock, I will build my church. Let me tell you something. Let me tell you something. A lot of people tell you, oh, it don't matter what church you go to. Yeah, it does. Matter of which house you go home to tonight, husband. Matters what home you go to tonight, children, wife. You better get back to the one where you got that relationship with. Bible says, join not yourself to a harlot. You have to understand the parallel of the bride of Christ is chased and separated under. Oh, can I get an amen? amen. Hallelujah. Praise God. We're still doing it that way. Thou art Peter, and upon this rock I will build my church. You know why it's so important to be in that church? Because that's the church that the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. You want to know what else? You want to know what else that church gets? And I will give unto thee the keys of the king heaven. You can't get in without the keys. And whatsoever thou shalt bind on earth shall be bound in heaven, and whatsoever thou shalt loose on earth shall be loosed in heaven. 